Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. Welcome back to Class of Fridays, where we look at a G.I. Joe classified series figure every Friday. This time we are looking at Flint. I thought that made sense since we looked at Lady J last time. Flint is a popular character. He had many appearances in the G.I. Joe animated series, and he had a good run in the G.I. Joe comic book series as well. Most G.I. Joe fans will be very familiar with Flint. Let's take a look at the packaging. The packaging has a window showing the action figure and accessories. We have the logo, G.I. Joe Classified Series Flint. We have some artwork of the character here. This artwork is pretty good, but I do notice a difference between the art and the figure. On the artwork, this chest panel is green, and the pouches below it are black. On the figure, that is reversed. That artwork continues to the side panel, and it looks pretty good. It looks like Flint has a scar, and that is reflected on the figure. This is number 26 in the series, and on the back of the box, we have the generic poster artwork we see on other classified figures. On the other side of the box, we have these symbols which represent his specialties. This one means he is a member of the United Federation of Planets. These are suppositories. This means he is a fan of the movie Krull, and this is a chess knight piece, which is inaccurate because Flint only pawn in Game of Life. Let's pull the figure out of the box and take a look at it. Here is Flint outside of the box. This figure is clearly inspired by the original Flint action figure from 1985. A lot of design elements are copied over. This is Flint's iconic look we would recognize this as Flint, even if it wasn't labeled as Flint. Let's take a look at Flint's accessories. Let's start with his beret. The beret is black with a red beret flash, looking very much like Flint, and that beret is removable. The beret is made of a soft, flexible plastic, which is great. Previous G.I. Joe hats were made of a harder plastic and did not stay on the figure very well. This works a lot better and fits more securely. Flint's next accessory is his shotgun. This is a callback to the original original flint shotgun accessory, but it looks very different. This shotgun is intricately detailed with gold and brown paint applications. It has extra shotgun shells on one side, and it has a hole in the barrel if you want to add blast effects. The shotgun will fit in a holster on the back of the figure. Based on the shape of the holster, I believe it's supposed to fit this way. There is a bit of an indent here for the trigger guard. That looks like it would be a bit awkward to draw, but I think it is supposed to fit that way. I am happy to have storage on the figure for the accessory. That's always a bonus. Flint's final accessory is his pistol. The pistol fits in a holster on the right leg. The pistol itself is pretty generic looking. It has a square barrel for square bullets. It's a Liefeld special. Flint has a couple extra pieces that you could count as accessories that are not really intended to be removed. He has a flak jacket. He has a belt with a couple devices that look like high-tech grenades. And he has has that holster on his right leg. Looking at Flint's articulation, he has great range of motion on the head with articulation at the base of the skull and at the base of the neck, so you can get lots of movement on the head. He has butterfly joints at the shoulders, but they are hindered a bit by his flak jacket. He can lift his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. There is a twist at the upper arm. He has double jointed elbows. He has wrist articulation with a swivel at the wrist and a hinge at the wrist. The left wrist is hinged up and down. The right wrist is hinged side to side. He has the brutal chest cut at the rib cage. You can't see it because of the flak jacket, and the flak jacket does get in the way of articulation. That makes sense if you were wearing a jacket like this in real life. That would also hinder your movement. The torso will twist at the waist. He has a leg split. He has forward movement of the leg at the hip. Not so much backward movement, not very much. He has a twist at the thigh cut. He has double jointed knees. He has a twist at the boot cut. And he has hinged and rocker ankles. Looking at the details of this figure, it's very impressive. The face has a lot of character. The very subtle smirk on his face is a bit lopsided, as it should be for Flint. He has that scar over his left eye and his hair has a fade effect that's really good. He's wearing a black shirt, which is appropriate for Flint. He has a flak jacket over it, and that flak jacket has some black paint applications, so it can replicate the look of that original figure while adding additional details. On the left shoulder strap of that flak jacket, he has this blue communicator thing that we saw on earlier classified figures. This is a unifying element of the series that I think they've mostly given up on. I think we will see fewer of these 
in future figures. His flak jacket has green straps that go over the shoulder. On the front of those straps, he has gold and black shotgun shells, and I think this is excellent. This is a great way to bring in some of the details on that 85 figure, but also add something. On that chest armor, there is a bullet strike right over the heart. It is subtle, but it's a really good addition and adds some character to this accessory. On that black shirt, just behind one of the green straps, he has a gold parachutist badge. I thought they just copied the same torso from Duke, but there are some minor differences. For instance, they eliminated the white undershirt that Duke has, so he has a bare chest, and that's not just a paint difference, that is a sculpting difference as well. The arms feature black sleeves rolled up to his upper forearms. His forearms are bare. He has brown gloves, and on his left wrist he has a wristwatch, and on his left elbow he has an elbow pad. If these arms look familiar, they should. They are the same arms used on Duke. Around his waist he has two brown belts. They are made of a single plastic piece. On the upper belt he has a belt buckle that is a dull metallic silver. On the lower belt he has a belt buckle that is offset and it is gold. On that belt he has what looks like maybe bullets for his pistol. He has a brown pouch and he has a couple dark green grenades. The lower half of the figure features a light green and dark green camouflage pattern that's a little different from the version 1 figure which had a green and brown camouflage pattern but this still looks really good. He has pockets on the outer upper legs. He has black knee pads. He has brown boots and black shin guards. These legs are pretty generic. These are the same legs used on Duke. The only difference is he uses different shin guards. So what do I think of classified Flint? I think it looks great. I think it looks like Flint and in one sense it is in keeping with the spirit of the original figure but in another sense it's a complete departure from the spirit of the original Flint figure. Yes a lot of design elements were copied over from 85 Flint. You can tell this is Flint at a glance but 85 Flint was made in the golden age of vintage G.I. Joe. It was made of entirely unique parts. Classified Flint is made up almost entirely of reused parts from earlier figures which is starting to become a hallmark of the Classified series. On the one hand this is kind of bad. It's awfully early in this Classified series to get quite so many reused parts. We have a lot of figures now but a surprisingly narrow library of parts. On the other hand this is a cost-cutting measure. It keeps the price point of the Classified series low and I do not want these figures to be more expensive. And although the base figure is reused it does have a new head, a new vest, new belt to try to make it look unique. How do you feel about the reuse of parts in the Classified series? It's not a big problem for me but I could see why it would be a problem for some collectors. That was my review of G.I. Joe Classified Series Flint. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check back every Friday for G.I. Joe Classified Series figure reviews. I do full detailed reviews of vintage G.I. Joe toys. Please subscribe to the channel and check out my huge back catalog of vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. I am on social media on Facebook and Twitter and I have a website hcc788.com. Support from viewers like you is the only way I can continue doing these videos. If you'd like to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do that. I'll see you next week with another G.I. Joe Classified Series review. Until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.